This is Canada Reads American Style, featuring two friends who love Canada Reads and Canadian literature. Welcome our host Rebecca from Michigan and Tara from Ontario. Hi everyone, it is Rebecca, and today I am chatting with Katie, one of our friends from Whitehorse, which I'm very excited to talk to her because obviously I've never met anyone from Whitehorse, so that was pretty cool. But today we're going to do a reader repartee, and it dawned on me not too long ago that we haven't done one in a really long time. So we've got Katie here to help us kind of kick off again our friends talking about books. So Katie, welcome. Thank you. I love an excuse to talk about books. Same here. Excellent. Okay. So our first question is, how did you become a reader? Okay. So for this one, it was a bit hard because I just always remember being a reader and uh, like going to the library with my family and my parents they both read to my brother and I like long after we could read ourselves like chapter books in the evening and stuff. But what uh, one memory I have that's fairly strong is when my dad had come home back from the library and he had little house in the big woods. And so I picked it up and was reading it. And I thought I was reading an adult book that I was loving. And then my dad was like, oh, I read those as a kid and I love them. So I thought you might love them. So, and it was true. <laughs> I did like, I became a big Laura Ingalls Wilder fan, but I do remember thinking like, wow, I am a reader of adult books, which wasn't the case. <laughs> so I love that your mom and dad both were library users and readers. So do you know just off the top, like what kind of books your mom sort of gravitated towards or your dad did as well? My parents are still both big readers. My and my brother is, my husband is, my in-laws are. So it's it's nice. My parents generally like mysteries best, I would say. And also literary fiction as well. But they're big mystery readers. So my mom for a while, she's visually impaired. So she was getting her audiobook sent to her from uh, CNIB and they then she would just have to read the books they chose and sent her so like that's a bit hard like I mean they knew what her preferences were but now with the iPad she gets to like read what she wants <laughs> so yeah that's so funny because my mom also is on a program because she's legally blind and so she has a program where she has uh, cassettes sent to her and they give you the player as well, which is really great. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. so funny. Be yeah. It's funny because here they'll do the same thing. They'll just send her whatever, but we, I regularly make requests for her and they accommodate everything. So it's just a really great program. And oh, okay. I'm, yeah. And I'm going to link both of those programs. The Canadian is the Canadian one still, I assume it's still, you know, if it's yeah, still in play. I don't know. I was on their website the other day and I couldn't, I couldn't tell, but I think they, they had this program where they're like anyone who, you know, is registered with CNIB can get a free smartphone. And so I don't know if that means that they're like, and we'll hook you up with Libby. So yeah, um, wow. or, or not. Okay. Well, somebody yeah. who's listening might know the answer th to that, but I'll also try and see if I can dig a little bit and, and locate some information. So, and then I just have to ask, so what types of books does your husband like to read? So he reads like when he's reading on his own time, it's escapist reads and it's more like mysteries and thrillers as well, but like legal thrillers, like Lee Child and... Michael Connolly. Uh, yeah. And then he does read the Louise Penny books, but he has been reading them out of order. He just reads whatever is available. I haven't read Louise Penny, but are, do you have to read them in order? Probably not necessarily. It would, it would make more sense if you did. There's <laughs> lots of ongoing stories in those books, but... I love that. That's really funny. Okay. So my next question is, what book do you wish you could read again for the first time? 
okay, this one was a hard one. And then, but then I realized uh, the book is On Fragile Waves by E. Lily Yu. And I'm just showing you, I have two copies because when I love a book, I don't ever want to, you know, give it away and not have a book left for myself. So it's a gorgeous and, cover. Yeah, it's isn't it nice? Yeah. So this book is about a refugee family from Afghanistan and their journey to Australia and their first years in Australia. And it is an excellent book. I loved the writing. E. Lily Yu is an American, and so I think she was conflicted personally about writing a book about this story, but she hadn't wasn't seeing it elsewhere, if I'm remembering correctly. So she also has like inserted herself into the story as this like American that doesn't even know which questions she should be asking, and maybe she's kind of offending people. Like it's a very self conscious. <laughs> way she worked herself in and then she had a like her comments at the end were very sensitive to the subject so the book is excellent i love the writing but it's heartbreaking and there are some spots where my stomach just dropped when my like my heart just dropped so it's one that i'd love to read it again but i don't want to have my heart broken again and it would just be hard to know where it was going some of the the plot so yeah wow okay i'm adding that one to my list that one sounds incredible and i've not heard of it so i'm gonna add that for sure yeah it's from erwan books so oh, i think okay. it's just a very small publisher which is mm -hmm. why like not your fault you haven't heard of it um yeah yeah and i picked it up because i'm a patreon of sarah hildreth's she has a Instagram account called fiction matters and she has a newsletter and then a Patreon. And so this, she had picked it for one of her book clubs a okay. year or two ago. Okay. Yeah. We'll link to all of that as well. Sarah's uh, account, although I'm sure a lot of people are already fans of hers. I bet. Okay. Now, which author living or dead would you like to meet in person and why? So this one I decided on Jane Austen, which may be a predictable choice. I've only read Pride and Prejudice and I've only read it once, but it's my daughter's comfort read. She reads it on audio and she's read it several times. And it's also my mom starts, restarts Pride and Prejudice every night to fall asleep to oh. um, the audiobook. So yeah. I feel like if I could have Jane Austen and my mom and my daughter, then that would that would go a long way as far as like a gift to them. And then this is the big thing is we could watch some of the 1995 Pride and Prejudice and 2005 Pride and Prejudice, and then we'd get Jane Austen to just say which one is better. Oh, I love that. Oh my gosh. I never thought of anything like that within the question, but you're right, because we would be bringing them forward to our time period. So, oh my, okay, that, that's actually a brilliant answer. I love that. Wow. <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> now I have to stop and think about, because I think, I can't even remember how I answered it, but probably it was a more modern uh, author. I don't remember, but um, now I'm going to have to have to redo that. I think I have to think about that. That's cool. <laughs> I love that. Okay. My next question is, what fictional character would you like to meet and why? Okay, this one was hard because I don't get like crushes on fictional characters and such. So like first I was like, oh, Sherlock Holmes. But then I'm like, I haven't actually read any Sherlock Holmes. I just want to meet Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was trying to think of like series or like books I've read a lot of, but I could only think of kids books. So I'm like, well, I could meet like mama bear berenstein and get parenting advice but then i was like well no my kids are older now so they don't that wouldn't work and then i was like clifford the big red dog because i have wished that clifford the big red dog was a real dog but i have three cats so that wouldn't work either 
So then I have I finally settled on a serious answer, which is I would love to re to meet Nayeli um, from Into the Beautiful North by Luis Alberto Urea. And I'm again showing you my two copies because I wow. love the book so much. Yeah. And I've read this a couple of times and it is this very enchanting story about a woman, Nayeli, who is living in small town Mexico and that a lot of the men have migrated north to the U.S. to work. And so she's like, we got to go get those men back. So her and a few of her friends, they make their way to the U.S. and then they gather up some men and then they go back to Mexico. So it's just like, it's almost got a bit of a fairy tale quality, even though it's talking about serious subject. And it's certainly, there are parts in here that are very serious, but just the way Uriah writes about it all was, is just wonderful. And then I just loved Nayeli is just like, just a go-getter. So, and it's, she's definitely a character that's lived on in my mind. Like, I'd be like, yeah, it would be good because you know, she's probably about 35 now, and it'd be good to see how things are going back in Mexico. So yeah, it's like, I want to catch up with her. Let me just say, I love how you are approaching these questions, because that is brilliant. Like Clifford, the big red dog. That's brilliant, because now I have to really, <laughs> I, I'm going to have to redo my own reader repartee and, and come up with better answers, because I love there's this one book, this children's book that I read called Chewy Louie, which is one of my all time favorites because when I was raising one of my service dogs who I adored and who graduated, uh, she has a little black lab and he's a little black dog and he chews up everything. And I love that book so much. I would want to see Chewy Louie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <That's a> great... <laughs> I love your answers. Oh my God. Okay. Well, I was, I found these questions hard. So I have given them a lot of thought. So. Yeah, um, it's yeah. Yeah, no, you've done a great job because I guess for me, I always I think fast, I talk fast. So for me, I just when I heard the question, I was like, boom, 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 just had my answers. But I think I'm gonna, I think Tara and I should redo ours because it's been a couple of years. So we probably should redo it and then see what our answers might be. And I would, I'll do what you did, which is put a lot more okay. into it. Because so. you have to know what you're gonna talk about. Like you yeah. can't just talk about the weather. Yeah. But, I mean, you can start with the weather, but. <laughs> and also this book in the beautiful North, I'm going to look at that one because I've, I've not heard of that one either. So I definitely want to check into that one. And he has written a lot and he has written serious books about life on the border. Oh, that would be good. You know, so, but this is his lighter book. Okay. Thank you. I'm definitely going to look into that one as well. Thanks for adding to my TBR. That's what I needed. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> you're welcome. Okay. And my last question is, and I'm going to change it slightly. I mean, I realized when I gave you the question, but I'm going to slight, slightly alter it maybe a little bit, which is what are you currently reading? Or if you want to mention anything else that you absolutely loved that you just want everybody to know about. Sure. Okay. Thanks. And yet, but then in that case, you might just have to cut me off at some point. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Um, Go ahead. <laughs> so one of the things we had sort of message each other back and forth about was after you and Tara discussed with this latest Canada Reads, you talked about other romance books that you think would be like on what every Canadian should read. And I did read another Canadian romance, but it's not one that I think would be good for Canada Reads, but I did really enjoy it. So it, and it's a novella, which is nice. So then it was like on audio, I think it was like three and a half hours. I didn't love the audio. So when I pick up another one, I'll probably just read the ebook. But anyway, so it's a fake girlfriend for Chinese New Year and it's by Jackie Lau. And it was very funny and, you know, and then there's still scenes in it that I'm just like laughing about. So that is one that I read recently and I thought of our discussion about Canadian romances. 
And then another one that I am maybe two thirds of the way through is The Foghorn Echoes by Danny Ramadan. And this is a book that my friend lent me probably like a year and a half ago or so. And I hadn't gotten around to it, but then he just came out with a new novella or not a novella, sorry, a memoir. And it's called Crooked Teeth. It's a queer Syrian refugee memoir. So I ended up reading that first because I was able to get the audio book and it was so good. It was very compelling. And he did something, I think, a bit different with the memoir as far as like talking directly to the reader and just being like sort of calling a reader out even because you know, at one point he is in a Syrian jail for six weeks and he says, like, I'm not going to detail to you what went on in those six weeks. That is very traumatic. I'm not revisiting it. I'm already, like, he writes about having to see, you know, go to a therapist and everything, which is, which is great that he's doing that writing the memoir but like to revisit some of those really traumatic things he was not going to do it for the book and I just thought that was so good that and then we should sort of check our expectations as readers for like when we're when we're asking someone to you know spill their spill their story or put their story on the page so it was really good and like at the very beginning he just talks about trust he's like you're just gonna have to trust me like memories are faulty this is how I remember it it was really compelling yeah I really like that because you know I was just listening to somebody recently I don't remember who it was somebody online and they were saying how we don't have the right to all this information so if somebody says something online and people say well what oh I know somebody's a child passed away and they they wrote a I, I don't remember who it was now but they she wrote a thing about unless you're my family or a close friend who already know it's none of your business and I thought you know I love that I think we have this weird expectation now with social media because so many people put so much out there that we have a right to people's privacy and we don't yeah. so I yeah. love this I'm, I'm gonna have to look at this memoir as well Okay. Yeah, and I was excited to tell you about it because like for me it was it's such a good memoir that I'm like, well we know they have memoirs on Canada Reads, so maybe one day we'll we'll yeah. see it there. So Well, how, do you know what year that was published? I'm just curious. Like is it a brand new the memoir? Oh yeah, it just came out a couple of weeks ago. Oh. Like two Oh, or okay. Three weeks ago, I think. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, so maybe we will see that. Oh. Well, and also the other thing, because this, the Foghorn Echoes is a novel and he sort of starts the book with almost saying like, it's really tiresome that people think this novel is autofiction. It's not, it's a novel. Like, you know, so just even that. So it's just interesting to read the Foghorn Echoes so quickly after reading Crooked Teeth. Yeah, and I'm kind of guilty of that. I often will read somebody's fiction and sort of feel like they're telling us their story. Now, truthfully, some authors do do that, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then some authors don't. But I sometimes yeah. have to remind myself that it isn't, they're not just telling a fictional account of exactly what happened to them. So I, I'm guilty of that sometimes. Oh, yeah, especially when they can write such a vivid story. You think, wow, you must have been there. <laughs> Exactly. And let me to mention, I forgot to, I was going to jump in and I forgot. Uh, The romance one, the fake girlfriend one, that sounds really interesting. And the fact that it's a novella might be the perfect solution for me in reading romance. Because again, because they tend to be pretty formulaic. And that's part of my issue. Like I said, I read one that was like 350 pages. And I was like, oh my Lord, like, I get where we're going. And now I've got to slog through another 200 pages. So I kind of like the idea that this is a novella. So I'm going to look at that one as well. So, yeah. I also really like that it was a novel because any romance I read, I generally think that was too long. <laughs> okay. But this one was I'm so. glad. I'm glad somebody agrees with me. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> and I do like romance. It's just. Yeah. That you get more than you need. Yep. That's how I feel. Okay. Anything, anything else? Yeah. So 
This is the one I started yesterday, The Philistine by Layla Marshy. And this one I heard about because I watch some booktubers on YouTube and one is Sean Bree's books. He used to go by Sean the Book Maniac and now he's Sean Bree's books. And he was talking to the author Christopher Duradio, I want to say his name is. And he was talking about this book, The Philistine. And so it sounded really good. And so far it has been. I'm only about 50 pages in. But it's about a woman who's grown up in Montreal. Her mom, I think, is Scottish or Irish Irish ancestry. And her dad is Palestinian. He had moved from Palestine to Egypt and then to Canada in the book. And basically she hasn't, her dad has gone back to Egypt like 15 years ago. And in the past like year or so, she hasn't really heard much from him. So she has now gone to Egypt to sort of track him down. And it it's the year is 1987, which is like always, I think a, something authors have to do now they they have to set it before cell phones before email oh yeah 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 (laughs) exactly she has found her father already so um it will be interesting to see now what happens next because i'm not sure but she's also met a woman that she really got along with the first time she met her so it will be interesting to see where that goes too Everything you're reading is pretty amazing. So I'm assuming that it sounds like, do you watch a lot of YouTubers? Are you following a lot of podcasts? Like what are you, it sounds like you're getting a wide variety of books from kind of all over, right? Yeah. Uh, Less podcasts than I used to, because it was hard not to just get excited about every new book, but I still do listen to some podcasts. And then I watch about four booktubers regularly I would say okay that's great I mean I don't really watch the YouTube channels as much as that I listen to podcasts but I totally kind of get that too that sometimes it's a little bit overwhelming with new books being thrown at you all the time and I can't I can't manage that it's too it's too overstimulating for me as well (laughs) so but now my next question which again wasn't a planned question but I'm just curious do you, and you're free not to to speak of it because I don't ever mean this in a judgmental way, but do you have like a big TBR, a physical TBR? I mean, I think we all have lists of books that we want to read, but do you have a large physical TBR? Yeah, I do. So okay. <laughs> I'm always impressed that you don't, like you've mentioned that a few times. You're so good. I know. That's so ridiculous. I, I like a deal. So I like to get books from the used bookstores or thrift stores like so I do have maybe 400 books that I haven't read like it's considerable but then so many of them I got for not full price so it's really hard for me not to pick those up and then I tend to just give away the books that I've read like I do keep quite a few I mean I just showed you ones I have two copies of but Mm-hmm. anything that I don't think I'll read again obviously I get rid of but even if it wasn't a hard book to track down I'll just give it away like I have a little free library that my dad built for me last uh, summer and so it's been nice to put books in there that's fantastic yeah I'm hoping to now that I'm woodworking I want to build my own little free library but I said, not only will it be a little free library, it's going to be a little free stick library. So dogs walking oh, by. Nice. Yeah. And then I thought, well, s- sticks or toys, I might put like little dog toys in there because I have a lot of people walk by with their dogs. And I thought that'd be really mm-hmm. fun to, since I don't have a dog, be fun that a dog picked up a toy on, on their way past. So yeah, yeah, we'll see. You know, the funny thing about TBRs, I, I think we're, I feel like 
people make a lot of judgments about how big or not small because mm-hmm. probably very few besides me have small ones but how big people's tbrs are but you know i really do love this idea i was telling a friend who has a large one and i said I would just look at it like it's your own personal public library. And I don't, when I worked in a public library all those years, I didn't read every single book in the public library, but it made me happy to look at all the books when I walked by every day. Uh, It made me feel really good that other people might be enjoying them. So I just feel like everybody should just say it's my personal public library (laughs) or not public library, private library, whatever. And it's okay. It's okay to look at books that you may never actually read. And I've also tried to like, not get too caught up in that sunk cost fallacy or whatever. And I have gotten rid of books that I haven't read. Like, I'm like, I don't, I got this book for $6. I don't need to give it now 12 hours of my time if I'm not interested in it anymore. So. But see, but that's, see, that's why I don't buy them because, because I'm such a mood reader. Yeah. That's what happens is I'll buy it. And then I'll look at it and I go, I really don't want to read this now. And I've maybe paid full price. So I, that's one of my things. That's why I don't do it. Uh, But, but even then I thought, well, I don't even feel bad because it just means I bought a copy for somebody who's going to enjoy it and they paid something and they supported their library to, Mm -hmm. to get it and everything. So I think we we all should just be happy about what we're doing yes. and there's no judgment about our our hobby and our and our passion. Yeah, and people who are buying a lot of books full price like that's great. Like we need the publishing industry to continue to be supportive. <laughs> so, supported. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I agree. Okay, are there any other books you want to chat about or is that pretty much it? Um you gave us some great titles. Yeah, I guess oh just show you another one uh quickly it's called the book of ramala and it's a city in short fiction and these are put out by comma press um and so i'm just i'm just showing you because it it relates to our conversation so it is a collection of i guess maybe 10 authors or so um that have written a a short story about the city and then if i like the story then i'm looking up the author and i'm seeing what books they've written and you know so it's like it's a a little to read list builder this book even though it's short (laughs) it takes you down the rabbit hole and i love those kind yeah i totally agree that oh my gosh everything you've talked about is on now I'm adding it to my list. I'm going to go look them all up and add them to my TBR. So thanks a lot. (laughs) But anyway, Katie, it was really a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much. You gave me a complete new and fresh way to look at these questions. And I thank you for that. So I think you were the perfect person to kind of kick off our return to our reader repartee. So just thank you very much for joining me today. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Those are kind words. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us on our bookish journey. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing, rating, and reviewing Canada Reads American Style wherever you listen. You can connect with the podcast and Rebecca on Instagram at Canada Reads American Style and with Tara at On a Branch Reads. Until next time, keep reading.